Today we're speaking with Dr. Eddie Reed. He is the clinical director, the Abraham Mitchell Distinguished Investigator, and professor of oncologic sciences at the University of South Alabama Mitchell Cancer Institute. Dr. Reed is a chairperson for the Science of Cancer Health Disparities Conference and is a member of the AACR Board of Directors. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Reed. My pleasure. Can you describe some of the disparities challenges you've encountered through your work at the CDC and now at the University of South Alabama? Among the disparities that um, exist and we struggle with on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis, the major issues usually have to do with access to care and the ability to pay for care. Uh, as is becoming um, more widely known, many of the disparities in the treatment of breast cancer, colon cancer, and other malignancies is a function of whether or not the patient and the family has the resources to seek state-of-the-art care. For families that have insurance, outcomes tend to be substantially better than for those who do not have insurance. And so many of the disparities really um, are a result of the function of resources. What are some of the challenges with recruiting and retaining minorities and underserved populations for clinical trials? One of the major challenges is trust. In many cases, a minority or underserved person, when they come to see the physician, they don't see someone that they can identify with. They don't see someone that they feel they can communicate freely with. And so when one talks about doing an experimental clinical trial, what people tend to hear is experiment. What people tend to think is, I am going to be a guinea pig. And many people view themselves as victims of circumstances. And that's very difficult to overcome. What are some of your thoughts on some solutions? I think that um, training uh, and faculty development of individuals from a broad range of disciplines is going to be very, very important. And I think it's important for two reasons. We need uh, caregivers um, and clinical scientists from all um, ethnic groups. But in addition to that, when you train shoulder to shoulder with individuals from all ethnic groups, you begin to appreciate things that you might not otherwise appreciate. So that um, Caucasian male who trains next to an Hispanic woman may view his Latino patients a little bit differently as a result of having that direct exposure. An African-American male who trains next to an Asian male may view things a little bit differently when he has patients of that ethnic origin. And so I think that there are two benefits, two major benefits, that derive from um, um, focusing on training a broad swath of individuals from multiple ethnic groups. You pioneered studies on the molecular pharmacology of DNA-damaging anti-cancer agents and the clinical development of Taxol for uh, treating ovarian cancer. What is next on your plate? <laughs> um, I, I have been very fortunate over time. I, um, uh, I've had people who have mentored me and who have trained me um, who spent a lot of um, their valuable time and effort giving me tips, if you will, that I, would, I otherwise would not have received. And um, my group uh, did the work to identify nucleotide excision repair as the key molecular pathway associated with clinical resistance to platinum compounds, cisplatin, carboplatin, and oxalic platin. And what we think we have done, uh, and we presented some of this at recent AACR meetings, we think we have identified the molecular transcriptional control of the genes that modulate that pathway. And so uh, among the things that we hope to present in the upcoming meeting in the spring is um, the extension of that work. And finally, as chairperson of the Scientific Review Committee at the AACR, are there scientific priorities that you'll focus on related to cancer health disparities? 
Uh, there are a number of, of scientific avenues that can and should be investigated with respect to health disparities. I, um, I mentioned a few moments ago issues regarding access to care, but there are also molecular issues that should be explored. One example is breast cancer. There is a molecular subtype of breast cancer called triple negative, which occurs in increased frequency in African American women. And among the questions that we hope to explore during the upcoming meeting is what are the molecular issues that we can identify that might be favorably manipulated in such patients. Dr. Reed, thank you so much. Thank you.